Hello, and welcome to the Female Gaze channel. The world of cinema has not blessed us with much representation of queer people, and when it has, they are often reduced to a two-dimensional stereotype or damaging tropes. There are, however, many films with which queer people have identified, and we are here to read between the lines and examine the reasons why. This leads us to the two films we will be discussing today, Love and Basketball and Bend It Like Beckham. These movies have a lot in common. They came out within two years of each other in 2000 and 2002, they are both directed by women of colour, Gina prince Bythewood and Gurinder Chadha, and they share a very similar subject matter. So what is it about these films that the gays love? They're both about heterosexual girls, Monica and Jess, pursuing their love of sport and a heterosexual love interest. Not gay. I'm a lesbian. Or is it? Both the movies centre young women pursuing their careers in sport. That is their main objective. So often in coming-of-age films like these, the female characters are limited to their relationship to male characters. If we look at coming-of-age movies that came out around the same time, like American Pie, Almost Famous, She's All That, the female characters tend to be defined by their relationship to a man. In Love and Basketball and Bend It Like Beckham, the protagonists feel more like real people and not just woman-shaped objects for men. You are just in time. Now, Love and Basketball and Bend It Like Beckham aren't the only films released in the 2000s which feature young women in sport. We've got Bring It On in 2000, Whip It 2009, and Stick It 2006. The difference is that the girls in these films are cheerleading, roller skating, and doing gymnastics, which is great, but these are sports which have been deemed by society as suitably effeminate for women to participate in. On the other hand, basketball and football are dominated by men in the wider world, so women in love and basketball and Bend It Like Beckham are breaking the mould of traditional femininity simply by playing a sport they love, which happens to be seen as masculine. They are breaking expectations that society has set for them, but they love their sport and have the drive to pursue it. Monica and Jess are both determined, hard-working and independent young women, and it shows. They are constantly using their individual agency to get what they want, not just with sport, but also in their relationships. Monica shows her agency through making the first move with the boy she likes time and time again, and dressing how she wants and speaking her truth with her mother. In Jess's case, she exercises her agency by challenging everyday misogyny and racism. Jess, is that injured? Pursuing football despite her parents' wishes and standing up for herself to her coach. It is at this point that I, an Irish person, would like to address this line. I'm Irish. Of course I'd understand what that feels like. <sighs> Yes, it's true that Irish people have faced discrimination in certain places and at certain times as a result of just our nationality, and our long painful history of British occupation can't be overlooked. But it is wrong to conflate the experience of a present-day white Irish person to the use of racial slurs against a person of colour. Prejudice against white Irish people is not anywhere as severe, harmful or institutionalised as that against people of colour. Not to mention that this movie came out one year after 9-11, which spurred on a wave of Islamophobia, xenophobia, and violence against brown people. I won't go into it any further, but if you're interested in learning more about this topic, I'll link some resources below. Anyway, leaving this line aside, Monica and Jess challenge what is expected of them socially. This tends to appeal to queer people because seeing women take control and have agency in their lives is empowering to other groups which have been disenfranchised by the status quo. Monica and Jess do what they want, they love who they want, and they wear what they want. Speaking of 
Speaking of which, the clothes that Jess and Monica wear are gay. Just kidding, there are no gay clothes or straight clothes. However, there are certainly ways to signal queerness through dress, and these kinds of clothes definitely exist under that category. Monica and Jess, as well as many of their friends and teammates, are women who reject femininity. They have no interest in performing traditional gender roles, not for their parents, not to attract men, not for anyone. They want to express themselves and wear what makes them feel comfortable. While it is true that certain clothing choices don't make someone gay, And anyway, look at the clothes you wear! <laughs> <laughs> Just because I wear trackies and play sport does not make me a lesbian! This more masculine style is a popular way to dress among queer women because it disregards the male gaze. It's about female comfort and female ease of movement, not about accentuating certain features for other people's pleasure. It's easy for queer women to recognise themselves visually in these characters because of the way they express themselves. Protagonists of both Bend It Like Beckham and Love and Basketball are young women of colour. They are minorities in their settings. They are part of an other group in society. Many people belonging to other groups can find comfort in seeing different other groups being represented. That is not to say that gay people face the same challenges as people of colour, but rather that they can recognise the struggle of being seen as other. And the way the characters are being portrayed as minorities is authentic and respectful, which has a lot to do with the way the movies were written and directed. Although, in doing research for this video, I came across an article by Shaili Karan, which goes into her disappointment with Bendit Like Beckham's portrayal of Indian culture and its heralding of assimilation, seeing Indian culture as a hindrance to Jess's life. That said, this is one person's experience, and hopefully with the creation of more South Asian representation like the Netflix show Never Have I Ever, or the 2017 movie The Big Sick, which both deal with the diaspora identity among South Asians, Jess's story won't have to be the be-all end-all for young South Asian representation. And it's not like these films ignored their protagonists' proximity to queerness. In Bend It Like Beckham, there is a whole storyline about Kira Knightley's character, Jules, being perceived as gay by her parents because of her interests, the way she dresses, and her relationship with Jess. We see her parents struggle massively with this concept, and the storyline culminates in Jules' mother, Paula, making a scene at Jess's sister's wedding, screaming homophobic things at Jules and Jess. Paula is instantly put at ease and goes back to her performative acceptance of the LGBT community when Jules assures her that she's straight. This storyline is sloppily handled at best and is harmful to queer people at worst, but through Jules, many queer people saw themselves. It feels like the filmmakers were too afraid to commit to making Jules gay, so they put her and her family through the motions of a coming out story without alienating a more conservative audience by actually facing the realities of the queer experience. We do see a different character come out as gay, but it's a character so disposable that it just feels like the filmmakers were self-aware enough to see their mistreatment of Jules' storyline that they threw a minor gay character in there to make up for it. Love and Basketball doesn't feature any gay characters, or really any speculation about Monica's sexuality, except of course, I'm a lesbian, which is not taken well by her family. Overall, while queer people have recognised themselves in these characters, the movies themselves don't treat queer people's stories with much respect. This is a symptom of the times they were made in, but it is interesting that movies portraying masculine women felt the need to hammer home the heterosexuality of the protagonists by making the queer experience the butt of the joke. I've said a lot about how women are being portrayed in Love and Basketball and Bend It Like Beckham, but I'd like to take a moment for the mothers of our two movies. In Bend It Like Beckham, there's an unfortunate trend of mothers being difficult and conservative, while the fathers get to be the accepting and supportive force. We see it with Jess's parents about football and Jules's parents about her perceived sexuality. 
This dynamic of an understanding father and a severe, intolerant mother of course exists in reality, but the problem arises when this is all we see represented in films. Fathers are often portrayed as the fun-loving, easy-going parent, while mothers are nagging and strict. Seeing as there were two different sets of parents dealing with their daughters growing up and the challenges that come with that, it would have been interesting to see an alternative dynamic being represented. As it stands, it feels like the mothers got the fuzzy end of the lollipop, as it were. In Love and Basketball, however, it was so nice to see a mother-daughter relationship being fleshed out, even to a small degree. The conversation between Monica and her mother reveals so much about the dynamics of their relationship, and also about each character. When it feels like every movie ever made is about a father-son relationship, this scene between Monica and her mother is refreshing and insightful. We get to see a discussion of shame, ambition, and the role of women, all neatly packed into an emotionally charged and narratively rewarding scene. We learn about Monica's motivations and how her mother's life influenced her perspective on one of the most realistic portrayals of an argument between a mother and daughter I have ever seen. All this being said, movies like Bend It Like Beckham and Love and Basketball don't need to be explicitly queer. It's cool to see more masculine women being portrayed with agency, but also as desiring men and being desirable to men. Gender presentation is not the same as gender identity or sexual orientation. And it's liberating to see women like Monica and Jess on screen expressing themselves how they want without feeling restricted to performing femininity or gender roles for male attention. Yes, it's true that there's been a huge lack of queer representation in cinema, but there's also a lack of characters like Monica and Jess. There's a big place for them in my heart, and when it comes down to it, I'm really grateful for their stories.